Nitrogen may be your biggest expense in corn, and how are you managing that on your farm? It makes a lot of difference what you've had for a previous crop. So today we wanted to talk just a little bit about CRP ground, corn on corn ground, and fields where you had soybeans the year before, now you're going to corn. Nitrogen needs are a lot different. One of the things that's kind of interesting and a hot topic the last few years has been soybeans. and. Okay, if you had 40 bushel beans and you're going to figure there's going to be about roughly 40 pounds of nitrogen that's going to carry over to your corn, what happens when those soybeans go to 60 or 80? You know, there's a lot of those concerns out there and, and people say, wait a minute, we've never had these kind of yields before in beans. <laughs> so here's an important thing. You need to do some soil testing for nitrogen. And when you do, we aren't just talking about the top six inches because as we all know, nitrogen can leach down in the ground and move around in the soil. So we're talking about soil nitrate tests. We're really concerned about the top two feet. Well, with this nitrogen, it can move down in the soil, but it can also move up. And that's why we're talking about soil testing all the way down two feet in the ground because as things dry out through capillary action, you can get some water moving up in the soil and that can bring along with it some of that nitrogen again. And hopefully, you've got some root growth going down two feet in the soil too. So there are kind of two ways to look at that thing. Either it's moving up or your roots are getting down to it. But the point is this, if you're thinking about adding some more nitrogen to your ground right now, we basically want to talk about three different levels of need in that crop. Here's what we use on our own farm in terms of nitrogen requirements. Okay, if we're coming off of soybean ground, I'll usually figure for our corn 0.9 pounds of nitrogen that we're going to have to actually apply per bushel of corn yield goal. So if we're going for 200 bushel corn, times 0.9, that's 180 pounds of nitrogen. You can either put that out ahead of time or you can put it out as the season goes along. If you've got lighter soil, we definitely wanna put that out as the season goes along, kind of spoon feed that nitrogen. Okay, then when you look at corn on corn, we'll go 1.2 pounds. So 1.2 times 200 bushel yield goals, 240 pounds of nitrogen. If you get to CRP, then the number gets a little bigger and a lot of people don't like to hear what I have to say on <coughs> CRP well, ground. Okay, you but... may say, wait a minute, now why, why is it <laughs> different on different well, types of ground okay. and a lot of it comes down to the plant residue that you've got in the field when you have right. a lot of plant residue or leftover carbon uh, yeah carbon from last year's crop that carbon is going to take some nitrogen for the bacteria to start breaking it down so when you're coming off corn ground it's a whole lot different than coming off soybean ground because there's a lot more residue and then crp takes it to a whole nother level yeah and and this carbon to nitrogen ratio is a really big thing so unless your carbon to nitrogen ratio is right then a lot of your nitrogen you apply is going to get sucked up by that carbon and by the bacteria that are trying to break down all that residue. So anyway, again, with soybeans, we're looking at 0.9 on our farm. This is what we do, 1.2 for corn on corn. When we come to CRP, you're probably looking at 1.5 at least. And for some guys with low yield goals, let's say 120 bushel corn, I might tell them 240 pounds of nitrogen. And <laughs> oh well, seriously, <laughs> if you, you've got to have a lot of nitrogen. <clears throat> yeah. I, we've, we've done it before. It's just like pulling pasture ground out. Now it's different if let's say you had legumes out in your CRP. Let's say you had some alfalfa or some clover out there. Then that's a different story because those things can produce some of their own nitrogen and your carbon to nitrogen ratio is way different than if it's just grass out there. All right, so we've got, got different levels of nitrogen that we're going to need to apply, but you may be asking some questions about this spray. If you've been pretty wet in your area, you're wondering, hey, what happened to my nitrogen? It, did it go down in the soil? Am I going to be able to get it back? How do I figure that out? And our two suggestions are, you wanna do soil testing. Again, do it clear down to two feet deep. The other thing is you could do tissue analysis and just see where your plant is in terms of nitrogen. And if you do some tissue tests every week, let's say, and you continue to show up deficient on nitrogen, deficient on nitrogen, you maybe wanna be getting some more out there. If let's just say that you decide, I need more nitrogen on my crop, how are you gonna put it on there? You can drag hoses, you can drip uh, liquid 28% on the ground, you could spray spread urea over the top if you wanted to. But in all those cases, you're going to need rain. And that's one of the biggest issues we face because a lot of times where we farm, we only get 22 inches of precip over the entire 12 months of the year. That's not very much. So we might go a month or two without rainfall in the middle of the summer. We don't dare take our chances just leaving nitrogen on top of the ground in the middle of the summer. In that case, we would like to inject it down several inches in the ground. That would be our best recommendation to you too. There's a lot less chance for loss that way. 
Well, there are a lot of issues with nitrogen and it's very important to understand what's going on in your fields because after all, it is the largest dollar crop input we're putting out on our farm for fertilizer. So keep track of what's going on with nitrogen in your field, do some testing, whether it's soil testing or tissue testing to find out if you're using that nitrogen efficiently. Well, another key to making sure you have enough nitrogen for your crop is keeping weeds under control so they don't rob that end. We'll tell you how to stop this week's weed coming up next.